You've done so much for me I cannot tell it all hey. If I had the thousand thoughts It still would be enough When you heal, you heal completely.
in his image and after his likeness. And the way he operates, he expects that man would operate in the same manner. The way he creates by the spoken word, he expects that People of God would create by the spoken word. We said again that, you know, the, the, the pieces of our lives, the, the things that are scattered, the things that are not right, when the spoken word is released over them and the prophetic word is released over them, it gathers things together and bring things alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, let's go to Proverbs chapter 18 and we'll read from verse 20. Proverbs chapter 18 from verse 20. Yes, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. The fruit of the mouth is the words, are the words that proceed out of the mouth. Yes, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. You, you, you see, what the, the second part is saying is that the things, the increase of our lips are the words that we speak. It says that the words that you speak, you will feed on. You will be filled with the words that you speak. In other words, that there is a consequence. The consequence, again, is that you will feed on whatever you say. That is why we need to be careful with the, use, with the use of the tongue. Let's go to the next verse. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. This little member that lies in our mouth has got power. Power to create. Death and life. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 He says, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, depending on how you use your tongue shows whether you love the fruit and when uh, uh, and, and how you will benefit from the same things that, that you have used your, your tongue to declare. And that is why we have said over and over again in this place that especially for parents, and, 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 and fathers, we must be very careful the way we use our tongues of our children. Because, because the, the, the destinies of children are, 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 are controlled by the things that the parents speak over their lives. Whether 
of death unto death or life unto life is dependent on the things that we say. And also over our own lives, the things that we say about ourselves. We need to be careful the way we use our tongues. Because you see, there is power in the tongue. It is not just an empty word. Once you have spoken it, maybe you said it carelessly, but then the results are still there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, sometimes we, we are careless, like we, we, I, I said, about, you know, and, and, and out of maybe bitterness, we make certain statements. And, and, and we, but we need to understand that once it is released, you cannot reverse it. Once the word is released, it is irreversible. It carries on traveling. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And I was saying this morning that we need to be careful. It doesn't matter what your father or, you know, whatever they might have done in some time past. Be careful in your dealings also with parents. Amen? Amen. Be careful in your dealings. Because there are consequences. Are you here with me? Yes. Amen. Amen. There are consequences. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe your father didn't treat you well growing up. But be careful the way you deal with that man. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A word to the wise is enough. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 49. We want to see something here. Let's read from verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that we shall be before you in the last day. So it was declarations of things concerning their future. Things concerning their destiny. Let's go to the next verse. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Let's go on. says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my mind and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Reuben, when in my me many years, there was a certain excellency that should Reuben ought to have portrayed by reason of his position as the firstborn. But this has not happened. Let's go to the no, next verse. Let's go to the next verse. This unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, in spite of the uh, of the excellency that he should have uh, uh, experienced, because thou went up to thy father's bed, 
Then defiles thou it. He went up to my couch. The father spoke out of the bitterness of his heart. Because of what his son had done. That is why this morning we're saying that parents, it doesn't matter however stubborn a child may be, it doesn't matter. You, you must have a heart to contain. Because this word traveled for generations with Reuben. It did not end there. It kept on with him into the future. It, it, it went, in fact, it went ahead of him. And it required a superior anointing to stop it. It could not be reversed. I want you to understand that the word once spoken cannot be reversed. The only way it can be neutralized is when under a superior anointing, a word is released to counter that which has been spoken. Yes. But the word once released cannot be reversed. So Things like you, you are a stubborn boy. No. May it be far from our lips. Amen. Things like a naughty boy. Because you see, we take them for granted. Those are words that we use very lightly. You are a naughty boy, maybe with a little knock to the head. But you are establishing something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is what happened in the case of Reuben. The word was with him. And he could not excel. You see, if the one is not going to excel, then it means that that person is going to remain stagnant. And stagnation over centuries will result in a reduction. So how did God deal with this situation? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 chapter 30, 33 verse Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 3 please. Okay? Okay? This was Moses at the end of his ministry. When he called the elders of the tribes together to speak over their lives. Say, yeah, things are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy Words. So Moses was sitting like in the place of God to pronounce words over the people of Israel. As the Lord would drop the word in his heart, he would speak it out over the people. Let's go to verse 6. Verse 6. says, let Reuben live and not die. Why such a word? Because, you know, you know, because it was as though a sentence of Death had been placed over Reuben. 
And that was that happened when his father spoke over his life. A sentence of death had been passed. So to 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 annul that word. To annul that word by a superior anointing, Moses had to speak into the life of Reuben. If you have been speaking negative over any of your children, when you go home, lay hands on that child and begin to speak positively. Begin to prophesy over that child. It will nullify that word that has gone ahead. But the word that has gone ahead cannot be reversed. But you who spoke it, you spoke it under whatever and anger or whatever, you have a superior anointing to, 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 to instill a word of goodness over that negative word. Or if you know and sincerely in your heart you have been doing it, you can bring it to any of your pastors. I mean, bring the child to any of your pastors and they will pray and release that child. Because sometimes the children are difficult. Amen. Amen. Say, let Ruby live and not die. And let not his men be few. So why that? It means that the man could not increase. He had got to a place where there was no going forward. There was no increase. Everything that the man would do would fail. Because a word had been released. May we, re, may, may, may we counter every negative word. Are you hearing me? Yeah. May we counter every negative word that we have spoken over our own lives, over our children in Jesus' name. And that is another reason why when the children go to school, some children are slow starters. And you, you hear, you hear things like where there was you know, but but tonight, I mean today, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you will reverse every negative way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know the thing, it is said about parents, especially about fathers. The fathers will never show the children how they won't tell the children that when they were going to school, they were always last in class. Yeah. Every father and every parent was always top. Uh, <laughs> The child is doing quite well. Maybe around even 10, 10, 10, they are about in class of about 50, they're about, and you are still condemning. So, I could only born home one day in Kakaka Kra or Ba, a be a nipper bed, you know, what Tosu Bay say do, and so I know to cry when in, so no, what's happening him? What was your position in school? Who goes school now, this same? Hmm. 
Amen. <laughs> I, look, I look in my life sometimes and I realize that I don't have the right to, to talk plenty. Because stubbornness was, is what? But God has been merciful. Amen. Amen. Are you understanding? Yes. Sometimes it happens and then your heart will be but I will say I will control it. You have to exercise control. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Especially yensu ayenye nuna obabia enkanye hon. I mean I will be fuse, a bufushu pa. That's what I will say. I will find it. Let not his men be few. May you not be few. May your generations increase. And be numerous in Jesus' name. Every negative word that you have spoken over your own life. Sometimes we say things like it is hard. May it be soft over your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you not struggle any longer. Maybe you have said over your life that you are a hustler. But today I reverse that word in Jesus name. You shall no longer hustle. You are not a hustler. In the name of Jesus Christ, I reverse the consequences. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we speak positive words over every life here in heaven. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. So do that over your children. Especially the stubborn in inverted comments. Amen. Amen. If God would be merciful to some of us, then we also have to be merciful to our children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, why do I say that the word once spoken cannot be reversed? We have been told about this, but this scripture has been used, and, and we have been told this several times. But let me just share again from Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. If you have been following on Fridays uh, or if you have been coming here, you just remember that just about a week ago, the same scripture was used. This says, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Please go back for us. This one we call it over speed. Maintain, maintain your speed level. Amen. Amen. It says that the things that God does like the rain that he gives to us and the snow that comes it has no return and it is true the rain that comes I haven't seen the rain bouncing off the ground and climbing back into the heavens it does not happen and the snow is even worse because it is light. Snow is like flakes. Okay? It is so, so light. It is lighter than the drops of water. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next verse now. 
He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. He says, it shall not return unto me void. We, we need to understand that, that from that, 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 uh, uh, this verse. It says, it shall not return. It shall not return. And then we can go on further and say that and it shall not return void. In other words, there is a consequence or there is a result that must happen at the speaking of every word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But it shall accomplish that which I please. You speak the word sometimes carelessly. But there's a consequence. There is a consequence. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Over our own lives, we use words sometimes very, very loosely. But there's a consequence. Says, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. Because the word cannot reverse. That is why we need to neutralize it by speaking over our own lives by speaking over the situation that we have brought over ourselves you know some, some, of, some, some of the I mean because you have been waiting and an and, 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 and innocent looking word or something, a statement like it is keeping long will we, 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 we'll lengthen the years more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the older ones, you know, are fond of saying certain things. My, my sickness. You are establishing it. So what can you in team so? Calling those things which be not as though they were. You now, are speaking it over your own life. From, from today, may you send it where it belongs. Amen. In Jesus' name. By a superior anointing that you carry. May you speak over your own body. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, brethren, as we are looking at the, 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 the power of the tongue, let's go to James chapter 3, verse 5. James chapter 3, verse 5. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, there were a number of, you know, very severe bushfires in the U.S. and Australia. Australia and U.S. And it, 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 was, it was such that the moment they were tackling an incident in one place, they would hear that another place was on fire. A fire had begun somewhere else. And if you were, uh, you had been born in 1983, okay? When we had the drought in this land, the, the drought is what caused the hunger. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But then it resulted also in rampant bushfires. But there's something very unique about bushfires. Says, Even so, the tongue is a little member and both great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire can live. You know, those, you know, like, like uh, suddenly a fire starts here and then the wind carries the sparks. We call, they, they, they call it kindles. Okay? It, and, and then it will carry it about a kilometer and drop it somewhere. When I was following that on CNN, you know, it, 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 it beat my mind. Because they could locate the direction of the wind so they could predict almost, um, you know, to certainly that the next fire would happen somewhere. And it would happen. Let's let's go to the next verse. It says, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a fire. You see, people, people destroy their homes with the misuse of the tongue. They drop a little word and the house is on fire. One person is angry and they begin something, they make a little statement and the whole family is turned upside down. It began with a little spark. And it was carried from one location to another. Blown along with the wing. That is how dangerous the tongue can be. And brethren, for us as a church, we need to be more careful the way we use our tongues. Because one person says something here, before long it has been carried to another location, and before long it is being passed on, before long it is reaching other, other places. Just one little word. It starts and it is causing a fire, an outbreak. In the coming year, may we be careful the way we use our tongues in the house. May we be careful the way we use our tongues in our homes. Spouses, our for you get angry. Ubufu. A Bible says that be ye angry, but see not. Just some say, Ubu and Fu, Nansu and Yaboni. But before long, you realize that husband and wife are exchanging words. Nansu and Nibaba, who swear, Naba, who know you, Naomu ye and Samano. And the children are observing. Yeah, yeah, son, it's not a mofran or eh? And we are one family. Even as a church, in the same way, and the young ones will be observing that which the fathers and the mothers are doing. Sana was safunumun so yeah, yeah, aye m mantani mabawa and kumafono was she nya e janum any and nanum eye. So let's guard our tongues. It says, and the tongue is a fire. You see, God didn't say that the tongue is like a fire. No. He was very, very careful and pointed in his choice of words. The tongue is not like a fire. No, it is not like a fire. The tongue is a fire. Oh, can one defend the fair assembly or Cassie Susse? 
Because it can destroy. And it can be passed on. Just behold how great a matter a little kindling, you know, it causes a little spark. A little spark carried from one place to another point, a, 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 a kilometers away, and before them, you realize a, another bush fire, wildfire has started somewhere. A world of iniquity. The soul is the tongue among our members. That it defileth the whole body. It is that which comes out. That's what Jesus said to the, to, to the Pharisees. He said, it is not what you take in that defiles the body. But it is that which comes out. That is that which defiles the body. In other words, that which comes out of our lips, the thing that we say. That is what defiles the body. And that is what defiles the church. Because we are the body. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. So you realize that a whole forest just began with just a little spark and the whole forest is ablaze. The course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. May, 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 our no, may our tongues not be set on the course of hell. May our tongues. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, in these days, we are very careful when we are going to eat. We are always sanitizing. We are washing. Men and women have become expert at the use of, 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 of uh, washing, you know, soaps. The use of soap and water. We have become experts. Before you eat, you wash and double wash. But it is not what you contaminate as you put in your mouth. That is not what is fearful. It is what comes out that would bring out. It is more fearful. Yeah. We, we, we will tell, tell somebody, sanitize your tongue. Tell somebody, sanitize your tongue. Sanitize or take them You know, I was. Let me just say this again. Donald Trump. You know, the, the man. <laughs> excuse my language, but Papa knew Jimmy Kakra. Kakra Ebipe. Jimmy Kakra. So I say, wait, they sebi o sebi. You know, they have a certain disinfectant. It's a bleach, very powerful disinfectant. They call Clorox. Clorox. Globia, ya de ya de po ya de po. I say ya de po adi amu. Very strong. They use it in disinfecting. So it's used widely in the US. Donald Trump is on record as having said that you know, one of the things when he was talking about the hydroxychloroquine and the thing, you know, is that they, they, uh, they recommend that people would drink lots of Clorox. Oh, I mean, it's on record. It's on record. Because they use it in disinfecting. I mean, how can a president be so dumb? Ah. But you see, for us as people of God, we as children of God, the Holy Ghost must sanitize our tongue. 
Amen. The Holy Ghost is the fire mm. and the Holy Ghost is like water. His operations. You must give him, submit your tongue to him. You know that your heart troubles you. So you use, before you realize, pay him now a gem. Before you, without much control, you know that you are, let him sanitize your tongue. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I was saying two weeks ago that, you know, God has been merciful to some of us. Very, very merciful. Because for some of us, our, our, our fathers were, were gentlemen. I mean, very, very a gentleman of gentlemen. I mean, our natural fathers. But, but, but we picked up some of the Jamestown beachside jeans. Although we never went there. I don't know. I don't know how it came about. But I could use my tongue so badly because there was so much, you know, with the anger. You know, that kind of this. And I was a fighter. I was saying that, you know, until my, my father spoke over my life. I said, your cry. I said, no, you'll be a, or you're a kufupa, it's just a nekoko nebe, no. From the day he spoke over my life. That dawn when he called me and spoke to me. The next time I went fighting, I would say, they beat me well, well. Because the fighting spirit had been demolished. May we pray over our children in Hallelujah. a life. May we speak words, positive words over there. If your child is slow, don't use the word slow. Don't use it. You can just say nicely that, oh, as for you, you take your time, whatever you are doing. But don't use that negative word, slow. Find some way of passing across the message. Yeah. Then, then, then you, you, you will be using words like we are tibo, araba tibo. You know? And then it is settling on the child. And some na yeke ni na etsabo frey abrabosu. We are repenting. Oh, I can say that we have repented. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. In the spirit of Christmas. This is a brief message. <laughs> Shall we rise to our feet? We just want to commit our tongues. We are committing our tongues to God. So that the use of the tongue will be directed by the Spirit of God. Just, just release a little, a, a, a little prayer. Release a little prayer.